What's up, Moneyverse? Dr. Dave here. Welcome to the Geek Lounge. It's Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to catch up with all my parcels and unbox all my Funko Pop weekly pickups. <sighs> Alright guys, welcome back to another Funko Pop unboxing, our weekly Sunday pickups video as well. We are going to get right into things. Where should we start? You know what? He's actually right here by the side. I'm just going to plug this very quickly. The Pearlescent Pikachu, the Pokemon Center exclusive, I should say, Pearlescent Pikachu. We actually show that off in Friday's video. There is a link to it if you did want to check that out. But yeah, let's get into these things. We'll start with the biggest thing here. I did actually pick up the Fred Weasley with, what is it actually called? Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. It is quite a mouthful. The latest in the Diagon Alley set. And I say latest, maybe even the final one, because we've already had, I forget which ones we had off the top of my head, but it's at least like five, if not maybe even six. And when I unboxed them all like earlier, well, I was going to say earlier in the year, no, it was last year, wasn't it? Uh, like Ollivander's Wand, I know, was the more recent one, and then this one, obviously, now. But this was the only one I could think of that they could maybe like possibly make, and they have. And I have to say, I think it is my favorite one. It just looks really, really cool, um, you know, with the, I guess it's one of the Weasley brothers, right, uh, who makes up this kind of statue facade style piece, taking the hat off. Uh, I think it does move in the movie, right? I think it's mechanical and it obviously reveals like a bunny underneath the hat, like a typical old sort of magician style trick. But yeah, Weas Weasley's Wizard Wheezes is quite a mouthful for me um, when the brothers obviously go into like entrepreneur, like it's their entre entrepreneurial journey. Man, I cannot get my words right here today. And they open up this shop in Diagon Alley. The one thing that I am disappointed with, though, why only Fred? Where's George? Like, why could George not be on the other side? I kind of feel they've missed a beat there, which, you know, like, yeah, it's just disappointing to me. Why, why only have one of the brothers? But uh, he still looks really good, though, to be perfectly honest, standing out there. It's almost like hand, handing out samples. So actually, did that happen in the movie? Is that why they've done it? I can't entirely remember, uh, but he's handing out, what is it, some puking pastels there uh, outside, looking rather dapper in his suit, I must say. Uh, but yeah, another really cool addition to that Diagon Alley set. Like I said, I think this probably will be the last one, unless there is like another kind of cool looking shop, something like iconic that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. We have the Hogsmeade ones as well. I actually got all of those in storage now, so uh, I can't really remember all of them off the top of my head. But yeah, like I said, another really cool addition to the these Harry Potter sets. Next up guys, I ordered a couple of older pops from DJ Collectibles to flesh out collections as well as get something signed, which I think is this one. It is indeed the Red Hood uh, pop in a box exclusive. Sadly, I had to get it off DJ Collectibles for, I think it was like 10, maybe 11 pounds, but I think it was going for 4 99 at one point uh, on Pop in a Box website when they did um, decide that, well, I don't know if they decided or if they were told they're no longer uh, going to be selling Fungo Pops, but I decided to pick this one up because I am, of course, heading to MCM Comic Con in London in May and Curran Walters, who voiced Red Hood, well, I say voiced, played Red Hood, I'm too used to watching anime, played Red Hood in the DC Titans uh, TV series is actually going to be there and I thought this would be pretty cool to get it signed because I really did like the character and I really did like the series. And speaking of the series, sadly it is coming to an end or has it ended already? I'm not entirely sure. We're all behind. We actually get it on Netflix over here whereas I understand I think it's like, is it HBO Max? Something like that, whatever it is in the US uh, but we always seem to get it a lot later uh, than when it is played in the US so I'm pretty certain we don't have what would be the fourth season right? Fourth and final. Obviously lots of changes going on at DC now. Um, I like. I know there's a lot of negativity around it, but you know what? I quite like James Gunn. I like his movies, so I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and see what happens. Because to be perfectly honest, the DC like what do they call it? DC EU, right? The DC Extended Universe. It's been pretty messy. The TV's been pretty good, although I, I do feel the Flash could have ended a few seasons ago, if I'm being honest. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the DC TV has been pretty good, especially this. Titans, I thought, was really, really cool. Didn't actually watch Doom Patrol, uh, which I understand is finishing now as well, but I, I probably will go back and watch that. It's just, again, not so easy. It's not like on one of these readily available streaming platforms here in the UK. It's like Amazon, but you have to pay extra uh, it's on one of those other channels. I forget the name. 
Um, but yeah, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt, see what happens with the uh, DC under James Gunn and Peter Saffron. Was that the guy's name? See how it goes. Anyway, guys, I'm waffling on because really I should be talking about this Red Hood pop, which is really, really cool. I think it's just part of like the, well, it's part of the Pop Heroes line. Um, I think it's really just a standard Red Hood release. Obviously, we've got the Gotham Knights one coming out soon enough. But uh, yes, yeah, just a really cool looking pop. Like I said, I really liked the character, uh, especially Curran Walters' uh, performance as the Red Hood, as Jason told in that DC Titan series. So yeah, looking forward to meeting him and getting this sign. And the other older pop I ordered from DJ Collectibles, guys, was this Hot Topic exclusive Blue Venom figure which I think just looks really, really cool. If you guys watched uh, what would have been Tuesday's video where I showed off my out-of-box Funko Pop collection, you'll see I had quite a few Venom figures, though I'm not sure I actually have any of those on the back. They're like more the OG ones of Venom Carnage and Anti-Venom. But yeah, this figure is just really cool. I really do like the blue on there, that green slime ooze, whatever it is on the tongue. Uh, I think this is actually quite an old pop. We've got a sticker here on the bottom that says 2014, or at least I think think it does um, it's not kind of like the the stickers we do see now with like the uh, you, you kind of have the 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 year uh, the month and the day of release right this one just kind of says like 2014 on here so I'm assuming it's from 2014 I can't really see any other day I, I'm pretty sure it is fairly old though got it for 20 pounds which I thought was a pretty good deal but maybe that's kind of like equivalent of TBD value anyway, because I think that's what DJ Collectibles goes off. I would actually love them to make a Venom pop from the uh, from the mid '90s animated Spider-Man series where he was black, but he ha kind of had these like blue and red accents as well. Like I loved that animated Spider-Man series from back in the day. Um, so I'd love them to make more because we've only had well, we had Madam Web, we had Spider-Man, obviously what Black Cat, Doc Ock. And I'm forgetting off the top of my... Oh, was it Hobgoblin? I think that was it, right? I think it was just those five that we've had. I think it was. But yeah, I'd love to see more from that animated series. In fact, guys, actually checking out the bottom of the figure, it does say 2017. I don't know if it is going to sort of go into focus and even if you guys are going to make it out in the light. So not as old as I thought. This is the sticker I was talking about on the bottom. I assume that was 2014, but I guess maybe it is just a code. So yeah, not as old as I thought it was, but still fairly old. But the rest of these are pretty new releases. We've got a couple more from DJ Collectibles because they did send me some pre-orders, starting with this one. If I can get it open, there we go. The Diamond Collection Amazon exclusive Yuga Ioma from My Hero Academia. This does, well, I don't like collect every single variant in a particular wave. There is, of course, the common of him, which isn't diamond, isn't uh, sparkly. So I guess you can't say I've fully completed the My Hero Academia like latest wave, but this kind of completes one of every character, if that makes sense. And man, this thing is crazy sparkly. Just look at that, guys. It's actually kind of ridiculous, but it really goes with Ioma. Like his character is pretty ridiculous right? Um, I think I say this every single time that I talk about My Hero Academia or show off a figure or something. I still haven't watched the new season. I'm waiting for it to finish. I think we've probably literally got maybe three or four weeks until uh, it actually wraps up, at least like in terms of the English dub, because I, I am watching it dubbed. But uh, yeah, back to the figure. Look at this, guys. I mean, the glitter is like falling off uh, over the table onto my hands as we're going around. It's, it's maybe the most spark like sparkly glittery figure that's a bit of a mouthful for me there that i even have in my collection glitter going everywhere on the goggles the wink i don't know if you guys can even like make out the wink there behind uh, her behind his goggles but uh yeah really really cool i like a plan to do a my hero video like well over a year maybe even like 18 months ago um when that wave came out and i was going to talk about figures that i'd love to see in the next wave and i actually had an idea to do like a diamond collection version uh, of Ioma and uh, lo and behold they went and did it so yeah very very cool very very happy with that um, yeah just incredibly sparkly glitter going everywhere here guys and my other pre-order from DJ Collectibles guys is this one the Hot Topic exclusive Momoshiki from Boruto now I'll be perfectly honest I haven't seen Boruto again I probably say that every single time especially when I open up the uh, the Naruto Kaiyu cards which we obviously did yesterday. I got a crazy pull. There's a link to that video, guys. I pulled a crazy card in that video if you guys did want to check that out. But uh, yeah, as I said, Hot Topic exclusive, Momoshiki. There's a look at some of the older figures 
uh, that have been released before. And like I said, guys, I haven't seen Boruto, so I really can't talk too much about Momoshiki because I don't really know enough about the character, even though I like really know his name. It's like synonymous now with Boruto. I think, does he like... Um, invade Boruto's body or something. I don't know if invade's the right word, uh, but I think he like takes over him or something, right? Is I, I'm assuming he, uh, or is it a she? I actually don't even know if, uh, or does it even have a gender? Um, but like, um, or like, is it genderless is what I meant to say. Uh, but Momoshiki, like, is uh, are they let's say and uh otsusuki because they look like they've got that eye up there like the sukiyomi eye um is what i'm seeing but it's a very very cool part obviously the horns the the, the white skin so i'm pretty sure it's an otsusuki but uh yes yeah, just a really cool looking pop on this kind of floating base uh the whites the blacks the yellows just looks very very kind of eerie evil um yeah i know it's a it's very popular in the the manga like this I don't know if the character's popular, but like the whole storyline and things have been very popular. Um, I know Boruto still gets a lot of crap from a lot of fans, but uh, I'll get around to watching it eventually. It's it's not particularly easy to actually watch Boruto here in the UK, at least dubbed. Uh, subbed, I think, is not too bad, but dubbed, I don't think we've got a lot of episodes here in the UK, which is a bit annoying. I think even on Funimation, maybe 50 or 60, that's it. Um, but I'll get round to it eventually at some point so I can uh, actually know what I'm talking about in terms of a lot of these Boruto characters. Next up guys I've got a few more of my One Piece pre-orders that have come in from popfigures.com and this one actually has the possibility of the chase. Nothing too crazy because it is just Jinbei but we'll do that one now because he was just a common not an exclusive but let's see we did get the chase Goldie Roger last time which was amazing it's still well actually I'm filming this guys on Friday uh, Friday mid-afternoon and um, there's rumours that Goldie Roger was going to drop on Funko Europe on Friday evening certainly on Funko US the rumours that we were going to drop I don't know whether it has uh, if it has good luck if it hasn't good luck for when it does drop I actually pre-ordered two of mine from uh, from Pop Culture in Australia they had it like over a month ago and uh, yeah I managed to get the common and the chase there's a link to that video if you guys did want to check it out but let's then see if our chase luck continues with Jimbei I've never received a chase from popfigures.com uh, uh, that was my first chase from pop culture i have ordered, uh, received rather a chase from dj collectibles can this be the first chase from popfigures.com it is not man it looks very cloudy though and upside down was that so cloudy ah it's a new protector so the uh yeah, it's wrapping all over it so we didn't get the jimbei chase which doesn't bother me too much um let me just pull all that off uh, or as much as I can, so you guys can see it a little bit more. I mean, we're going to take close looks at the figure anyway, and it does have some of the newly... Well, I guess those are the new common releases, right? Uh, they're of Jinbei, Zoro, which we have received and shown off before. The Snake Man Luffy, I still actually haven't picked that one up. I am going to grab the metallic version. Um, it hasn't dropped over here in the UK yet, but it's readily available on Pop Culture in Australia. And then we do have the 6-inch Kaido, which I do have, and we'll show that off in just a moment. And here is the common Jinbei guys in his orange kimono. I believe the chase one is yellow if I'm not mistaken. These did all drop, I say all, like a lot of the One Piece figures dropped on FunkoEurope.com. I think it was last week, wasn't it? Like not this week, just gone. I think it was the week before. Uh, Whitebeard, uh, Luffy, was it Red Hawk? There's a few others. Um, I did actually try and get Whitebeard, and I, there was one other. I like I already had them on pre-order from DJ Collectibles with the American stickers, and I thought I'd do like a try and do a two two for two like a common and a chase for two of the figures and we had the usual crap we get with fungo europe where you get put in a queue for two minutes changes to 12 minutes changes to 20 minutes yada 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 i checked out at one minute past eight which was when they went live um and yeah by the time i got through in about 20 minutes whitebeard had sold out i could have got the other one but i was like yeah no, I don't really care. I did care more about Whitebeard, but we'll see. I've got the Crunchyroll exclusive one of him coming. But yeah, this is Jinbei, guys. Really can't talk too much about this character. In fact, the, the other two One Piece characters that we've got to show off, I really can't talk about them too much either because I'm still a long way off. I literally just finished the... Um 
they're like Jaya sub arc, so they they just literally re or just literally have reached uh, Skypea. So I'm on the like the Sky Island saga. I think like episode 150, 253, something like that. I think when I looked up, Jinbei doesn't debut until like episode 430 or something like that. So yeah, I'm still like just under 300 episodes away. Uh, before we get to him, but this is still a really, really cool pop. Can't wait. I'm actually I'm, ugh, losing my words again here, guys. Absolutely, I'm loving One Piece uh, where I am at the moment, so can't wait to see more and more of it and like really learn about these characters. And we'll do the Kaido up next, guys, which is still bubble wrapped, but just while I open this up, I'll tell you a fun not really a story, a fun little fact that happened. When all of these One Piece figures dropped for pre-order on DJ Collectibles, Pop Figures, Pop Culture, etc, etc. I ordered a bunch from various, from, well, from all three of them actually. Uh, as I said, got my Goldie Roger, Child Big Mum from Pop Culture. I ordered most of the commons from Pop, uh, Pop Figures and then a bunch of the US exclusives from uh, DJ Collectibles. Apologies if that bubble wrap was a bit squeaky, etc, etc. But when Pop Figures actually dropped the Kaido figure, again, I hope I am pronouncing his name correctly, uh, they actually had it on there for the regular price of a regular size pop. So £9.97, I think it was. And uh, I guess they then realised it was actually a six inch and it actually then went up in price. But they actually gave me, I feel like I've said actually far too many times there, they gave me, uh, or they honoured the price, which I thought was very, very cool. So yeah, I actually got this pop. Uh, at £9.97, a six inch, you just can't go wrong. So massive kudos to popfigures.com there, but look at this guys, this figure is insane. Look at the size of that base. That has to be the biggest base I've ever seen. It even has, has uh, three pins, because one also goes into his massive club. And uh, yeah, like I said guys, I'm nowhere near him. If I was like, what, 300 odd episodes off of uh, Jinbei, I think I'm like, 500 plus episodes, 600 even, because I think he doesn't come in till somewhere around the 700s, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, the detail on this figure is insane. This massive six inch monster. I wish I could talk more about the character and what's going on, but like I said, I don't really know anything about him. Him, her, again, are there genders? Not really sure. But uh, yeah, I can certainly appreciate the detail. I have actually just seen Whitebeard, he just literally came into it. And he's actually massive as well, so I was a bit kind of like, when I saw him, I was like, ah, oh, like the pop is normal size. Why didn't Whitebeard get this six inch treatment? But uh, we'll discuss more on that when I do get my Whitebeard popping. Fingers crossed we can get the chase. I did only order one though, uh, so yeah, we'll have to see on that. But like I said, yeah, such cool detail on this. Mammoth base, mammoth figure. Ah, oh, yeah, this thing just looks amazing. I, I kind of get like, um. Uh, like Roman Reigns slash Jason Momoa vibes here. If they ever kind of, well, they are doing live action One Piece right with Netflix. Maybe there's some uh, casting there, but I guess if he's that big, he would probably have to be a bit CGI anyway, right? And the final One Piece figure to come in from popfigures.com, guys, is the Hungry Big Mom. So again, apologies for the squeaky bubble wrap. Maybe I should have done this off camera for you guys. Uh, but here we go then, Hungry Big Mom. Of that, uh, did this not come with a sticker? Was it not? Or was the uh, no? Actually, the Child Big Mum I think was the speciality series. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, again, there's a look at the uh, other figures on the back, but yeah, they're just the same as the others. Yeah, guys, look at that hungry Big Mum. And this is again an awesome looking pop. Awesome detail. Very very heavy. Um, yeah, but sadly, I can't really go into too much detail on it. Um, I think I looked up somewhere around 570 episodes is when Big Mum first comes into it. So, yeah, I'm, what, 400 episodes away from her. So, yeah, sadly, couldn't really talk too much about these characters, but we can still certainly appreciate how cool these pops look. We're kind of around the back now. I mean, like this fiery hair, I guess, does, is that like part of her powers, what she has? This kind of cape going on, flowing in the wind. I have no idea what she is uh, on here in terms of the base. Some cloud, maybe? Like, uh, like looking at these pops, I, I like literally cannot wait till I get further in my One Piece journey. Like, even though I'm already 150 episodes in, uh, I feel that 
uh, like like there's so far to go right and like there's some animes i'm pretty sure hunter hunter's not even 150 episodes long like black clover which i recently finished is like only 170 odd obviously it's going to come back eventually um it's crazy i feel like i finished animes um with uh like these same episode counts is what i'm trying to say right and i'm like 10 percent if that done of one piece so far which is crazy but yeah i really like this pop uh, get, like even the hair has this face, this tongue, the red eyes, the sword. Even the sword actually has a face. Uh, if you guys can make that out on there, uh, the hilt of the sword as well. This cloud thing has a hat. We've got the tats, the rings. Uh, just such a cool pop. Like I said, cannot wait till I get further in my One Piece journey to see what on earth is going on here. And we have one final Funko Pop to unbox for today's video, guys. It is the Star Trek Shop exclusive 40th anniversary Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan. Khan Fungo Pop. That is a bit of a mouthful, right? But there it is, guys, with that Star Trek Shop exclusive sticker. I'll give you guys a quick look at the box. Nothing really going on except for the emblem, the glam shots, etc., etc. But yeah, that is a really cool sticker. Although I do feel when I first ordered this, it looked more like iridescent, whereas it's not here. I, I mean, I could be talking crap, though. But one thing that's certainly not crap, guys, is this figure. It's got some really nice detail on it. You guys will see that plastic insert there, which is like a protection for the finger. I've decided not to take it off. It would just be a pain to get it off and then on again, because this is unfortunately going to have to go straight into storage because of all the space issues we are having here on the Geek Lounge. But yeah, some really, really nice detail on the figure. I can't claim to be the biggest Trekkie, guys. Um, I did, like, like, I've seen all of the OG movies, but a long time time ago i've seen uh, most if not all of the next generation ones as well uh obviously the late like, season of picard i've seen a lot of star trek um the professor was more of a trekkie but we we're definitely bigger star wars fans uh, to be perfectly honest but i always liked the wrath of khan as a youngster it always scared me he had those like earwig type things that went into like chekhov and can't really remember off the top of my head entirely i'll need to go back and watch the film obviously the uh wrath of khan is considered the uh I, I think the best of the og movies right i think it's actually is it not one of quentin tarantino's favorite movies like let alone star trek movies it's one of his favorite movies right but i think he is a big trekkie anyway but uh yeah just some really nice detail on it 40th anniversary uh if you guys are uh wondering the um the pop like the box did not come in any kind of, like it wasn't protected in any kind of way it came in this really dingy kind of small uh shipping box to be honest there was no paper in there no bubble wrap but i was just so lucky that my box came out in near minty condition there is a little bit of a uh, dent at the back i didn't show it off to you guys but i'm sure you don't really care too much it's only very very minor so i was quite happy about that but um yeah I don't know what more I can say. It's a cool pop. I'm happy to get it and add it into my collection. And well, there we go, guys. That is me caught up with all my Funko Pop parcels until next week. So that is going to do it for today's video. First and foremost, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me here on the Geek Lounge. It is very much appreciated. And I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If so, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Drop some comments below out of the Funko Pops I picked up today. Which one was your favorite? And what have you guys picked up recently? And as always, we've got plenty more content on the way for you guys. Tons more Funko Pops. I think I said it last week. I've got like something like 60, 70 pre-orders still to come. There's more things dropping every single day or well not every single day but like every single week let's say so tons more Funko Pops coming in uh, we're going to aim to do more Lego on the channel later this year but again space is a bit of an issue certainly much more Star Wars content we are continuing with our Star Wars Hot Toys Mandalorian Marathon every single Wednesday we're going to be checking out the Armour of Hot Toys this Wednesday cannot wait to check out that one Star Wars celebrations very very soon now Two or three weeks, can't really remember off the top of my head. We're going to be covering all four days of that event, getting things signed, checking out the stores, uh, panels, probably won't be able to fill the panels, but tons of Star Wars content, especially through Star Wars celebrations, and then just more figures, statues, etc. In general, all that content coming for you guys, so make sure you stay tuned for all of it and more. What is the easiest way to stay tuned, you ask? It's very simple. Subscribe. Hit click, smash that subscribe button, and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on any of that future content. Guys, Thanks again for watching today's video, and we will see you on the next one. Peace out, nerds.